Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Craftmas, day 19, and today we're going to be making Christmassy bath bombs. First off, I have to admit that bath bombs are horrible to make, I've hated every minute of it, but I feel like after doing some googling and searching online and looking at loads of different recipes, i finally come up with a recipe that actually works. But I have learned a lot as I've been going, so stick around and I'll tell you what not to do so that you don't make the same mistakes that I've done. Okay, so essentially for this, all I want is I want one measurement of each thing and to one measurement I want three of baking powder, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to be using this as a measurement and I'm going to be putting three baking powders in into the three bacon powders, I'm going to be putting one corn flour, one citric acid, one Epsom salt. I think you can just use normal table salt. I don't think it has to be Epsom salt. And that's it for the dry ingredients. And we're going to mix them together. And I think in America, they call it cornstarch because I was looking for cornstarch and I couldn't find any anywhere. And I could only find this stuff called corn flour, and apparently it's the same thing. And I think in the UK, and maybe other countries, we call it corn flour. And in different countries, they call it cornstarch. I have no idea why. Right, so one cup of corn flour. And we've got your Epsom salt here. I don't know why you have to use Epsom salt. It just seems like a really fancy salt, but it just looks like a thicker kind of table salt. Um, so I think you can get away with just using table salt one cup of that and we want one cup of citric acid and you can find this online I bought mine on Amazon and I thought citric acid for some reason was a liquid but it's actually just kind of like a powder it looks mo more like sugar and you just want a cup of this in there and then you want three lots of bacon powder and the reason obviously you want three lots is because this is the stuff that'll make the fizz when you put it in the bath Okay, and when you've got all your dry ingredients in your mixing bowl, you want to mix all these together. I'm going to be using a electric whisk so that I know it's all mixed together properly, but you can use a fork or a hand whisk, it's completely up to you. Right, and that's all mixed up. And then I've got a mixture of, this is basically your wet ingredients. So you want your dry ingredients in the bowl first, and then you want to mix your wet ingredients like slowly at once. Don't pour it all in together, because if you pour it all in together, it mixes up with the bacon powder and it all fizzes up and it doesn't work. So that's one thing I did learn from this. So mix it really carefully together and just add a little bit at a time. And this is basically a mixture of just oil, vegetable oil, water, I've got purple food colouring, and I've actually got a mulled wine scented essential oil, and I just kind of eyeballed it all together. Um, I don't think it really matters. It might matter, I don't know. But, and the thing is, I bought the mulled wine smell off Amazon. It just smells like sugar, it doesn't smell like mulled wine, but that's what's making this Christmassy. And what we want to do is add this slowly into here until you've got quite a wet mix mm, mixture. Quite a wet... can't talk. Quite a wet mix... I honestly can't talk. Quite a wet mixture. <laughs> um, but you also want it quite dry at the same time, if that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. But you don't want it too wet and you also don't want it too dry. You want something in the middle kind of like a wet but not too wet sand which probably doesn't make any sense either get it a little bit wet just so that it can be molded basically so i'll add this together i'm gonna get rid of this Ugh. 
Oh, get so messy. This is my nose. Ah, oh, right. So once you've got that mixed, you'll have something that's like this, and it is like a wet sand, so you'll be able to compact it like that. So it's not too kind of dry and crumbly. I've made loads of batches where I've made them too wet and they fizzed up, and I've made them too dry so they're all dusty and crumbly and they don't kind of compact together. So I think this is an okay mixture. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your mould. You don't have to have a mould either. You could form this by hand if you wanted to. But you just want to take your mould and kind of get each side and squash it together and make them as compact as possible. And another thing that I made the mistake of is I thought you had to keep these in the mould and it turns out you don't because if you do they all kind of bubble up so you actually want to take them out of the mould while they're like that and you want to put them to one side and you want to keep repeating this until you've used them all and yeah that's one thing I learned is that if you, for some reason, I'm not sure why, I think maybe they get too wet, but if you keep them in like this, it all starts to like bubble up and stuff. Um, I don't know why it was, and it took me weeks to figure out what I was doing wrong, and that's what I was doing wrong. So, yeah, that's one thing I definitely learned from making these, is to do that. And you just obviously want to keep repeating until you've used all your mixture up. And then once you're done, you'll have something that looks a little bit like this. You can obviously be neater with them if you wanted to. I'm in a little bit of a rush. But that's what they should look like. They should be wet enough to kind of sculpt, but not too wet to the point where they've kind of fizzed in the bowl. Um, so that's the fine line, and that's probably where you're going to make the mistakes, and that's where I've made the mistakes. So make sure not to add the too much liquid in, and also don't leave them in the mold. They're the two top tips I can say to prevent you from absolutely ruining them. And I just wish, I just wish I'd known beforehand. But now you know, so that's good. And then you obviously want to wait for about 24, maybe 48 hours for these to fully dry out. And then you can decorate them and you'll have something that looks like this. And obviously with these, I've made them all different colours and I've attempted to decorate them and it didn't go very well. They're quite hard to paint on. So for this one I tried to kind of make a berry shape or something. It just looks like a nipple. Um, this is supposed to be a Christmas tree and it just kind of looks like a blob. It doesn't... It looks better on camera. It looks terrible in person. This one is supposed to be maybe like a snowflake or a star or something. I don't know and it's all smashed on the bottom. Um, and this one's supposed to be a star, which it's okay. And this formula's too dry. This formula's too wet, so I know fine well this one won't fizz up. And this one's just crumbling as we speak. But all the others should be okay. But what we'll do is we'll go into the bathroom and test them out. And hopefully they're gonna fizz in the bath and do what they're supposed to do. Okay guys, I thought I would bring the yellow one as well with us that I thought wouldn't work just to see if I was wrong and to see if it is going to work. I don't think it's going to but we'll test it out. I'm 100% sure pretty much. Actually I'm 95% sure that this one won't work. Um, no it didn't really work like what a bath bomb should do. Hang on. It just kind of sunk to the bottom and it's fizzing a little bit, but nothing. I don't think they're supposed to sink, are they? I think they're supposed to float. So no, I don't, I don't think that one works really particularly good. But I think, I think this one might just end up like disintegrating on top of the water. So I'll try this one. Now oh, that's better. Yeah, that's a lot better. But again, that mixture was quite dry. 
and I think a more wetter mixture is better because it's just it's dissolving too quickly. So we'll try. I'll try the green one. I think the green one's going to be decent. Oh, the <laughs> the colour's horrible. It looks kind of like pond water or something. Um, but that one's working better. Yeah, that one's working a lot better. The colour's vile though. And then, since we've got all this colour going on, I'll just throw a red one in there for the mix, why not? Uh, let's see, see if this one works. Um, I don't know where that one's gone. Oh, I think it's over here. I think that one's sunk as well, actually. But it's working. See, the blue one and the green one actually has disappeared already. But they've worked. The thing is, I'm not particularly a bath person, so I'm not really sure how bath bombs are supposed to kind of work or what they're supposed to look like. They smell really nice, they've coloured the water, and I think that's all they're supposed to do, I think. And I flavoured them with kind of Christmassy smells, so there's like candy canes and mulled wine and lots of other stuff going on behind us. Um, and for the most part they've worked, some haven't, but hopefully you know what not to do when making bath bombs. And hopefully I've given you kind of a guideline of how to make bath bombs. But ultimately, is it worth making bath bombs at home? Mm. I don't think it is. I think it's just a lot easier and quicker just to go to the lush and buy some bath bombs. I'll go to your local store and buy a decent bath bomb. It'll probably be far better quality, it'll work and it'll be cheaper to make. And they've all stopped fizzing now as well. And they only lasted like, a, probably a minute. But the water looks nice. It's kind of a, a nice greeny blue color, very Christmassy. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode of Craftmas. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for another episode. Bye.